Hi everyone, it's Deja Yetmir from CrochetEverAfter.com and right now I'm going to start my newest free pattern workshop which is the Nitty Gritty Washcloth. This is a great dense thick cotton washcloth that is great for scrubbing just about anything. To make it all you're going to need is some 100% cotton yarn and an F hook. Of course you'll need some scissors and a yarn needle to weave in ends but this is a very easy project and I'm going to walk you step by step through it. So let's get started. Alright, so to begin my nitty gritty washcloth, I am going to start by putting a slip knot on my hook. And you'll notice that this yarn is a different color from the picture in my pattern. This um, is not the peaches and cream, this is a different brand. This is the Lily Sugar and Cream Stripes, and it is Violet Stripes, 21317. So if you like this color, this design that I'm going to have in my washcloth, this is the um, ball that I got. And it's really nice, it has long color runs, which you need when you're working crochet. If you like striping projects, find striping yarn that has long color runs, because knit, a lot of yarn is made for knit, which has... Um, less yarn to use to make a stripe so the color runs can be quite short so if you're doing it in crochet you need to find yarn that has nice long color runs and this one really has um, some long ones so my pattern tells me that I need to chain 25 so I've got my slip knot on my hook and I'm going to go ahead and create 25 chains and I, you'll see as I work if you're new to crocheting um, I always point my hook down when I'm pulling through my chain, and that makes it nice and easy to pull through. If I hold it towards me, I'm going to get stuck a lot. So just point it down at your previous chain and pull it through. I also push my hook so that the new loop rests on the shaft, and that's going to give me even consistent stitches. You can see how even these are. And I keep tension on my yarn so that if I pull on my hook, I can pull it right back. You always want to keep your loops the size of your hook. That's going to get you the proper gauge. And gauge is um, important for certain projects. This isn't so important. I'm using an F hook, a 4mm, and it's going to give real dense stitches, really small condensed stitches, which I like for this washcloth because I want it to be a scrubbing washcloth. You can definitely um, up the size if you're more comfortable working in a bigger hook. You can use an H or even an I and um, it'll just make a loftier washcloth. It'll be a little bit bigger too. This one should be about six inches across when you're done. So I'm going to count how many chains I've made so far since I wasn't counting while I was talking. I won't count out loud so in case you're still chaining you're not going to get messed up by my counting. So let me just check what I have. I'm going to keep on doing the rest of my chains right now without counting them so that I don't throw you off. Now I have 25 chains and I'm ready to begin my first row. So my pattern tells me that I'm going to start in the third chain from my hook. So if you're new I always say count the V's because each chain looks like a stacked letter V. So I don't count the loop on my hook because that's my working loop. I start from there. I see one, two, and three. And because I'm putting an edging on this project, I just stick my hook through the back loop. There are other options. You can stick it through the back loop and bottom bump, which gives you kind of a double loop to work into, where you can even do it in the bottom bump. But because I have an edging on this, the fastest way for me is just to go back loop. So whatever's fastest for you, go ahead and do. Just make sure that you keep it consistent. If you're going to work into the back loop across, make sure you do that for every single stitch. That way um, the stitches resulting will look the same. So it tells me that I need to single crochet two times in this stitch. And if, you're, if you've um, crocheted before, you know that this is also an increase. I just put two stitches into one, so I've increased this stitch to by um, one. 
Now my pattern tells me I have a repeat. So now I have stars, which tells me that I'm going to repeat everything within the stars as much as the pattern calls for. So it tells me to skip the next chain and work two single crochets into the chain after. So if you have difficult yarn to tell where your chains are, you can always look for your V's. So you can see my next V is right here. I'll bring it a little closer so you can see. Here's my next V, which I'm going to skip, and I'm going to work into the second one. So I insert my hook in there, and I'm going to do two single crochets. And my pattern says to work it across, and I'm going to end with two single crochets in my last chain. So I just keep on skipping one chain and single crocheting into the one after two times. So it says SC two times in next stitch, which means single crochet two times in your next stitch. You could also call that an increase. I'm not making my row any bigger because I'm skipping a chain. So I increase two stitches, but I'm not working into each chain in between, which does not create a stitch. So at the end of my row, I'm still only going to have 24 stitches, as if I had just single crochet into every single foundation chain across, with my very first chain um, being my height chain. So if I was working just a regular row of single crochets, I would turn and insert my hook into the second chain from my hook and work across, which would give me 24 single crochets because I'm increasing two and skipping the stitch after, I'm still keeping my stitch count the same. So that's an important thing to remember because I advise um, anybody that is not used to visually seeing how many stitches you have or knowing if your stitch pattern is looking correct to stop at the end of each row and count your stitches. And sometimes, like, this yarn is a little difficult to see because it's two colors in one. Sometimes it's a little hard to see where your chains are, especially if you have very inconsistent chains. So you want to check to make sure that you got the right amount of stitches. I'm almost at the end here. So you see I have two chains left, so my pattern worked out nice because I'm going to skip this one and I'm going to work two into the very last chain like my pattern tells me to. And then I'm going to stop and count and make sure I have 24. Pull that out. And I like to count the V's on top. I don't like to count this way because trying to figure out which is a stitch can be difficult. If I turn it and I count my V's, it's always the same. It's always V's and easy to see. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 23, and 24. So I have 24 stitches like I needed. Now we're going to turn and work back for our second row. It tells me to turn and it tells me to chain one. And the chain one is always just to make your height correct. If I just started single crocheting into my stitches, the edges of my project would get scrunched down because the very first single crochet would be a little small. So I chain one and it says to skip my first stitch. So my first stitch is this one right here. If you're not sure, turn it and look for your V's. You still see the V. So you see that V? This is your chain one, so don't count that. Here's your first V, so skip that one, which is this guy here. Sometimes the first stitch is a little difficult to make out if you're new. And then you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch, always under the two loops. So make sure if you only have two if you're new, you can pull it apart and look for two. With a smaller hook, it's easier to catch extra loops because you're little hole that you usually insert your hook into is pretty small. So make sure you just have the two loops and then single crochet two times into that stitch. 
And then we have a repeat again, and it's the same repeat. We skip the next stitch, always turn it if you can't find it, there's our next one, and work two single crochets into the stitch after. And it tells me to do that all the way across again, and I will end with two at the very end again. And you can see that this yarn has a really nice long color run because I'm already in the middle of my second row and that I haven't gotten to a new color yet. So when I say choose yarns with long color runs, if you want to have a, a nice striped project, those long color runs will help you to do that. In the pictured washcloth that's made in the peaches and cream, that's more like the camouflage type colors where it's really short color runs that create kind of a muddled spotted effect or camouflage effect. So depending on what you like, that's how you're going to choose your yarn. If it's hard to tell if they have long color runs, if you've never been to Ravelry.com, that's R-A-V-E-L-R-Y.com, Ravelry, they have a great section. It's a free site to join. It's for knitters and crocheters. And they have a site or a tab that's called yarns. Find the yarn that you're looking at and type it in and then you can look at projects made with that yarn and it'll show you how it looks crocheted or knitted up. So people will upload their projects and it'll show you if it's a knit and it's only maybe two rows of color before it changes to the next one, that's a pretty short color run. If it's two rows in crochet, that's a nice long color run. So you see I'm down to my last two stitches. This right here, that's my turning chain. So I'm going to skip that one and I'm going to single crochet twice into this stitch. So I'm going to keep going with these rows. I'm going to do a few more rows without you guys. So I'll get a couple rows of height so we can look at the gauge. So you can learn how to measure the gauge and also count the rows so that if you want to just work without having to mark down what row you're on, you can, um, you can easily count how many rows you have. So I'm going to pause this and work on a few rows and you can pause me and work on a few rows and I'll meet you back on row 5. Okay now I am back. I have finished row 5 and you can see that my color change has taken place. I now have a nice blue stripe going. So I got four whole rows out of the purple, so that's really a good color change, a good long color run. And what I wanted to show you now before I start working on row six is how to check gauge. Now usually when you make a gauge swatch you would make kind of like a four inch by four inch square, and you can definitely do that, but since this isn't important for gauge on this project, it's not something that you're going to wear, you can, if you want to check gauge, you can do it just by checking it as you work. So I have my gauge checker here. This is a plastic one. It's called the Knit Check, but you can use it for crochet or knit. And it's got a cool little cutout here that I'm going to show you what that's for. So you need to be able to tell your rows and where your stitches are and where your rows are. So what you can do is look, you can come to where your foundation chain is and look at how your stitches are formed. So we have, you always want to find the two loops of your single crochet. This blue is a little bit easier to see. So I have one loop of one single crochet and then the loops of the second single crochet that are worked into one stitch. So you can see that right here this is four single crochets because there's two loops for each stitch. It's much easier to see in this blue than in the purple. So what I can do is I put my gauge check over, and I want to start where my V's are. So even if you wanted to turn it just to get your V's, you can do that. That's even easier. And you're going to go to the very edge of one V and count till you hit this one inch mark. So you can see when I do that I have one, two, three, and four. You can see that's where my next V begins. Let me bring it a little bit closer so you can see. So you can count those V's, one, two, three, four, so I have four single crochets for one inch. 
Next, I want to check my rose. This color um, is quite nice because you can easily make out four rows right here. Because I did four and then I, my fifth row switched to that blue. If not, what you're going to do is look for those V's again. So you can find the V's down here coming up, and then the next row of V's, and then the next one, and the next one. So you look for those loops popping up. And I like to go right at the bottom where the join is. That's where you're going to count the first row. So you don't count this part of your foundation chain. You want to bring it right above that foundation chain. And then you're going to count all the way up. And now you see I have four for, sorry, let me bring that up so you can actually see it. Four rows for one inch. So that is showing me that my gauge is correct so that I will result in a six inch square with my edging put on. So that's just how you check gauge. Not important to do but it's good to learn for when it is important. Now we are just going to continue on in our work. We always chain one to begin and skip that first stitch. And you're just going to keep on with your two single crochets in every other stitch. So I'm sure you're keeping busy on the latest episode of your favorite show while you work this washcloth. I won't bore you with going over row after row. What I want you to do is put me on pause and get to your very last row, row 24, and then I am going to show you how to put on that reverse single crochet edging after, of course, that first row of single crochet edging. All right, I am back, and I have finished all 24 rows of my project, or of my washcloth. And now I need to create the first round of my edging. So to do that, instead of working my stitch pattern, I'm done with that. Um, two single crochets in one stitch and skip the next stitch pattern. I now want to work evenly all the way around a round of single crochet. So I'm going to turn my work and I'm first going to work along the last row that I just did. So I'm going to chain one. So you should always chain one for your height. And I'm going to single crochet 24 times across. So I need to begin in that very first stitch there. I don't skip that stitch like I have been um, in my previous rows. And um, an option that you can do for your edging, since this is self-striping yarn, you can pull your yarn till you get to your next color, or whichever color you like, and then cut your yarn and join it right at that finishing row. So if I wanted a blue edging, I could pull the purple yarn until it turns blue and then join it in and start my edging with the blue yarn. So you can create kind of a cool effect if you wanted to do that. Since I'm just doing the tutorial, I'm not going to get that crazy. But I want to work across this top row around so that I can show you what you should do over in the corner and also how to work into this bumpy edge. So I'm going to pause for a second and get to the end of this this last stitch and then I'll show you what to do at the corner. Alright, I am back. I have done 23 single crochets across and now I'm at my 24th single crochet. Remember if, you're, um, if that chain one confuses you and you're not sure how many, if you're supposed to work into that stitch just count backwards, see how many single crochets you've made already, and you'll know if you should be working into this stitch, which you shouldn't, because I've already made 23, and I'm on the 24th. Now I'm going to make my corner, and how I make my corner is by single crocheting three times into that last stitch. So the first single crochet that I do is the 24th stitch of this set, this side of my edging. The next single crochet that I do into that stitch is going to be technically my corner. So that's going to be the point 
the part that um, points diagonally out. And then the third stitch of my corner is going to be the first stitch of my 24 going this way because that's going to work into that first row of um, single crochet on this side of the edging. What I want to do to make an even edging on this side is put one single crochet into every row that I made. So you can look at your ridges and follow them up and you'll see that you have kind of a V. So you're going to put one stitch on this side of the V and one stitch on that side of the V and that should give you 24 working back across. So I have the first one done already. Now I need to put in the next one which is kind of this weird bubble here. I need to put one right around there because that's going to be this row. This is my 23rd row. So don't skip too far and miss that row. So now you see I have my first V. So I'm just going to go under these first two loops that are on the side. And I make sure that I pull this loop all the way up to the top of my work. I'm not going to keep it the same size as my shaft because then I'm still going to get kind of a dip between each stitch. I want to pull it up so that I can make a straight edge all the way around. So you're just going to pull it up slightly. I'm going to work in this next part of the V. It's always V's we're working into it seems. So I grab, it's kind of a twisted. You kind of end up grabbing about two loops when you do this each time. And I pull that up so it's nice and um, even with the rest of my row that I'm working. And I'm going to do this all the way across. It takes a little bit extra time to work these side edgings because you want to make sure that you're going in the correct place. You're inserting your hook in a nice area where you're not just going to catch one loop. If I just catch one loop like this and pull up, you see that I have like a really big hole. So I want to make sure that I take the time and I grab both of those loops. So I grab this one and that one. So I have two loops so that I don't have such a large hole when I single crochet. Make sure you're pulling up both of those loops so they're nice and tall and I want to show you how even my edging is getting so far. So you can see it's nice and flat so I don't have any more of those V's. And that's why I want to put a whole single crochet edging around before I do my reverse single crochet. It just makes it a nicer, easier um, edge to work into. So I'm going to keep on continuing around the entire outside and come back when we join up right here and show you how to make that turn over here and then we'll work our reverse single crochet. Alright, as you can see I've made single crochets around the entire outside of my washcloth and now I'm back almost to the beginning of my round. I have one more space for single crochet but I actually need to do two into that space. And that's just to make the corner like I did for all of my other corners where I had three single crochets. Remember this first single crochet of my round counts as the third single crochet for my corner. So I need to do two more in this one stitch to make that turn and to make a full corner. So put two single crochets at the very end of your work and then you're going to join your round with a slip stitch. Now usually I tell you to tighten down your slip stitches in single crochet to make them invisible but because we're doing a reverse single crochet next we need to keep that slip stitch kind of loose so that we can easily insert our hook into it. Now the reverse single crochet round which is next is maybe a new technique for some of you. It creates a really neat edging and once you learn how to do it it's quite easy. It's just the first um, few stitches can be a little tricky so you want to make sure that you're getting them placed correctly, especially in the corners. So this slip stitch took the place of our very first stitch of the round. So that is not going to be our corner. The next stitch is going to be our corner. So we're just going to do a regular reverse single crochet in that first one. So to do the reverse single crochet, you're going to chain one for your height. And then instead of working into the next stitch like you would for single crochet, you're working backwards. You're going to bring your hook down 
and through that slip stitch that you just made. If you find that you lose your loop when you're doing this because you're bringing it backwards, you can just pinch it with your finger to get it to get your hook right through that spot and just push through. And then like a regular single crochet, you're going to yarn over or lay over as I like to say and pull up that loop. Nice split just a little. There we go. Now the important thing to remember when you're doing a reverse single crochet, this loop that you pull up it has a tendency to want to jump over to the other side of the loop that's already on your hook just because of the way that the stitches are going. Don't let it um, flop over. You need to keep it to the left side of the loop on your hook. And by doing that, that's going to create the texture of this stitch. So yarn over and pull through both loops and you've finished your very first reverse single crochet. Now, the next one we make is going to be our corner. So we need to put three into this one stitch. Let me show you the very first one. So notice how I'm holding onto my loop. I'm inserting it under both loops, like a regular single crochet, pulling up a loop, and then I'm keeping that loop on the left side. Yarn over and pull through. Now, because I'm going back into that same stitch, the reverse single crochets have a tendency to want to stack on top of each other. Because you're yarning over this way, it can easily start just building on top of each other. So if you see, if I just do it without thinking, I've just created kind of a single crochet on top of the last single crochet. So I need to be very conscious of where I'm placing my hook and moving my yarn over and my draw up, which is this spot right here, this draw up, to the right of my previous reverse single crochet. And that's going to give me the nice corner. So I finished that one off. Oops, I lost it. These are a little bit trickier to do, so you got to take your time, especially in these corners. And I need one more to finish my corner. Again, I want to make sure that it is to the right of my previous stitches. And once you get past the corners, it's a little bit easier going around. It's just those first corners can be a little tricky. So now I am in my next stitch and I'm pulling through. And you'll see when you work it, it's a little bit um, difficult to keep it you want to keep that loop that you draw up, this loop right here, on the left side. Because it really has a tendency to want to jump over to the other side just because of the direction that you're going. And then I like to, when I pull, when I draw through both loops, I'll kind of hold on to them at the top and grab them down here so that they don't jump when I'm pulling the loop through. And what I'm doing is creating that really neat textured edge of the reverse single crochet. This is also called the crab stitch. So I'm going to keep continuing around to my next corner and I'll meet up with you there so we can do the corner again. Okay, I'm back to the next corner. I've made one whole side of my reverse single crochet. And if you're not counting just make sure that you're working into the middle of the three single crochets that made up your corner. So you can see that I have one, two, and three, so I still have one more single crochet to go before I get to my corner. Um, if you are counting, you should have 24 reverse single crochets, and then you're going to have your corner stitch. So I'm going to do the next reverse single crochet. And it's called reverse because you are going in reverse. You're not turning your work, you're not working from right to left like you normally would you're going from left to right. So I'm doing my very last of this side, the 24th, and now I'm going to work three into my corner again. So push through, drop that loop, and pull through. Okay, now I gotta remember to keep my loops to the right of that previous stitch so I don't just build on top of it. So I can kind of pull that over while I'm drawing through so that I keep working that corner. I have one more for that. Oops. 
Draw that up, pull it over to the right. The corners are the most um, difficult part of the stitch, but as long as you get them nice, it's pretty easy going after. And you get a little practice. You just rip it out if it's not looking the way that you want it to look. And the reverse single crochet is completely optional. You can just do another round of single crochet. Um, I'm going to work over to this corner so we can do the hanging loop next. So I'll pause it while I do that. So if you just wanted to work single crochets instead of the reverse single crochets, you would do two sides and then stop and meet me over here for the hanging loop. So let's pause for a moment and get there. Alright, I have worked down the second side of my washcloth, as you can see. And now I am back at my um, corner stitch. And now it's time to make the hanging loop. So the pattern tells us that we need to chain 16. So I want these chains to be very even and slightly tight so that they're not loopy or droopy. So to do that, I'm going to make sure that I push my hook so that the um, loop rest on my shaft and that's going to give me the even stitches. They're all going to be the same size. To keep them tight I want to make sure that when I'm pulling through I'm keeping really good tension on my working yarn so that they stay nice and tight and they don't pull out of shape when I pull through. If you're having trouble and you're getting caught when you're trying to make these chains make sure you're pointing your hook straight down at your work and you'll be able to slide easily through those tough um, chains. So I need to make 16 of these and then I'm going to join the hanging loop with a slip stitch in that same stitch that I started out right down here. So let me get to 16. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 4 more, 2, three and four. Now because you're working backwards, um, if you try to do your slip stitch like you would a normal one, you see that your yarn is kind of in the way and your stitches are in the way. So before you go to make your slip stitch, make sure you're keeping your yarn over out of the way, kind of behind your work so that you can get through that stitch and not have it looping around your hanging loop. So put your hook back through that um, hole that you just made the last stitch through and then slip stitch through. And once you actually get through, you'll be able to pull up that hanging loop and it'll sit there correctly. Now I am at my center stitch again, so I'm going to do another three reverse single crochets into that stitch and work down the next line of my work and do the corner again. So I'll go ahead and work on those and I'll meet you where we're going to join at the very end. So we'll pause for now and meet back up right at the end. Okay, I've finished reverse single crocheting around the entire outside of my washcloth and I am back to the beginning of my round. So now I need to join this with a slip stitch so that I can fasten off and weave in my ends. So what I want to do is, because this is a reverse single crochet, it can get a little difficult to insert your hook the normal way by bringing it down to do that slip stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come at it from kind of underneath so that the loop is just straight um, over the next stitch. So I'm just going to pop through that top loop that I made from my reverse single crochet and just pull the yarn through. I'm not even really wrapping it around or anything. I'm just grabbing it with my hook by pointing my hook down and then pulling it right through both of those loops that I have. And that's going to finish it off. Then to fasten off, what I do is I do another slip stitch or technically a chain. I'm just going to yarn over and pull that through and then pull it out. And I'm going to tighten down that chain so that it's almost invisible. And that's going to help secure my end. And then I'm going to make a nice long tail that I can weave in. So at least about six inches. I always do kind of longer so that it's easy to thread and actually sew. 
So after I cut it, you see I have the two tails here. I just grab my ball of yarn and pull back to get that extra tail out. And then I have just the actual tail. I have my handy yarn needle. I always like the metal ones because they don't bend as much. And this has a really nice large eye so that I can thread my thicker yarn. So to thread it easily what I do is I fold it over the top of my needle and pinch it real tight and just pull the needle out and then I just put it right through and that makes it a lot easier to thread. Now you notice that I have a white tail and I have not very much white on my color change. It's more purple and blue. So I want to be really conscious of where I'm sewing this in and I want to get it in between my stitches so that it is not going to show through and I have this white tail weaving through all this color. So what I'm going to first do is go backwards from where I just came to kind of secure and hide that little chain that I made and I'm gonna work a couple of um, weaving in, I, weaving in ends, I guess you might want to call it, right through that white just to get it kind of in the center so that I can start weaving it through the middle part of my work and that's really gonna secure it well. I could just go straight down this line and make just a straight weave in. The only problem with that is is it can has a tendency to pop out as you use your item. So a washcloth as it gets wet and dries and it stretches and goes back and forth, this little end might pop out. So weaving it in, if you actually take the time and really secure it, you're gonna go through and go back and forth and weave it kind of diagonally through lots of different stitches. I'm not going to weave this whole thing in because that'll take a little time um, and you may not want to watch that whole process but just watch how I go diagonal one way and then I'll go through and go diagonal the other way. And I'm trying to get these right in the center of these stitches so that this white is not very visible. So that can take a little extra if this was all one color, it would go much faster, but I want to be really careful not to have the white show through much. So you can go a certain straight for a little while, and then you'll want to turn it back the other way. And this will really get a nice tight weave that won't pull out as easily. And then what I do to cut it is, mm, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it here so you can see, but I like to kind of stretch my work a little to kind of pull that tail in as far as it's gonna go and also kind of the way that my project might stretch as I use it so that it kind of pulls on it and gets it in there nice and where it's gonna wanna sit for good. And then I'm just gonna pull up on it and cut it as close to the project as I can get without actually cutting the project and then pull on it a little bit more and make sure nothing pops out. So as you can see both sides, is both sides are clean and we have now finished our entire washcloth and it's ready to go and that is how you are going to make the nitty gritty washcloth. If you have any questions or need clarification on anything just leave comments below and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, I and if you have any requests just leave those also but that is all for now thanks